What? Dynatrace can do that with open telemetry? No way. Hey Andy, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. So um, we continue our exploration of Dynatrace, um, mm -hmm. wherein you teach me some cool stuff about Dynatrace because I'm a newbie. Um, yeah, super yeah. excited to dig into the the next part, which is what? I think uh, we already did services mm -hmm. and we did traces. So for me, the next one would be logs. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Do you want to so... uh, pull up your, your Dynatrace UI? Yes. And again, for background, for those watching, if you've been keeping up with our show, um, I am basically sending data from the Otel demo into Dynatrace. I'm running it with Docker Compose. So it's been running now for over two hours. So we have mm -hmm. plenty of data. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And so just as I, as I said earlier, uh, <laughs> when you are new to Dynatrace, it's the easiest for me, at least, is to press Command K or Control K. Magic. It's an easy shortcut for the global search. And um, I want to look at logs. So the easiest is probably just to type in logs. Here we go. Hey. Logs. Here we go. We'll open up the logs app. So now the second thing, Adriana, as I always say with the recordings, to have a little bit more space on the screen. We can oh, no. always also collapse. Maps, yes. Yeah, so Magic. exactly. So this should be a little bit familiar to the Traces app that we have because right away we get an overview of all the logs that came in, in this case, in the last 30 minutes because that's the mm -hmm. time frame that you've selected. Yeah. And you get an automated overview and split by log level or log yes. status, right? Yes. So I guess we have a bunch that don't have a log status by the <laughs> looks of it. <laughs> yeah. So we get a quick overview. And then the point is, right, when you do, when you analyze logs, you want to uh, filter on logs, you want to analyze certain types of logs. And this is where we, again, have the filter options. Now, what we haven't discussed yet, which might be good for a separate episode, uh -huh. is the filter that you see on the very top left next to the filter yeah. bar. There's a little drop down. Um, oh, here, this, this thing one here. Yeah. This is called oh, segment. Yeah. yeah. I think we should cover segments at a, at a sec, uh, at a later stage, but yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a global filter on what type of data should be analyzed at all. Now, um, in the filter, if you click in the filter now, yes. Right. So we automatically get suggestions on what okay. we want to fit on. Ooh, yay. Do we uh, want to, um, do something with service name perhaps? Well, I would, I see that at least there's no errors, but there's some warnings. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so maybe, exactly. maybe we, we focus on the warnings. And if you scroll all, right. all the way up, I think it's Stand status. It. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then warn. Well, maybe that, yeah. Let's see. Well, it does show warn here. So is it case yeah. sensitive? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's not case sensitive. Hurrah. Yeah, there we go. Um, awesome. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, so we automatically get a uh, list. Well, how many do we have? In 99 records, actually. Uh -huh. and, uh, we get that's the classical overview. I think the timestamp is descending. So the one on the top is the latest one that comes in. Yeah. You can click on any of those, like click on uh -huh. one of those. Let's. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so, what topology is supposed to represent? Well, what do you think? Um. I'm guessing like network topology. Yeah, or topology. We call it, uh, I think what I mentioned last time, every time data gets sent to Dynatrace, whether it's a trace, uh, a metric, a log, mm -hmm. we assign that data point to our data model, to our dependency model. We call it SmartScape, so the topology. Topology could be this log was captured from a particular host, from a particular process, from a particular container, from a particular uh, server, okay, okay. from a network yeah, yeah. component. So topology, when when data comes in, we are enriching it with um, with topology information. Now, in your case, the reason why nothing shows up here, you mentioned this, I think you're just running this on Docker Compose and you're not yeah. adding any additional information, uh, but Correct. otherwise we would see exactly where it comes from here. Yeah? Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Okay, cool. so we've got some 
useful info here throughout. Yeah. yeah. And then I think one thing that is nice, because you mentioned services earlier, and I can yeah. see here the service name is the load generator, right? Do you see this? Yes. Where your mouth is? Right here, yeah. Um, yeah. And then maybe we can just filter on it, yeah? Because you can click on this little, yeah. Perfect. Ooh, hello. Yeah. That's very convenient. <laughs> and we'll run the query to refresh. Exactly. Okay. Right. So this is just an easy way. Now, in this case, it seems most of your warnings or all of them are actually coming from the load generator. But yeah. the point is you can interact with this table and you can click on the individual attributes. Now, by default, you only have timestamps, status, and content, which mm -hmm. in most cases is probably good enough to have as an overview. But what you can do with most tables in Dynatrace, you see on the top right where it says 14 columns hidden. Yeah. You can also click on it. And now you can, find, if, if you really like, let's say the service name as a column. That sounds good. Yeah. Ooh, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> I want to know what this, ha what this does. Yeah. Ooh, how cool is yeah. that? Yeah. That is neat. That is freaking neat. <laughs> yeah. Wowee. So yeah. this tells you, dude, this is like super cool. <laughs> it tells you like where in the code this is, what? I think it's it's where, I, I guess so, right? It's the export function that created that log file. So whoever, Aww. however this log got generated, right? Oh, look at um, that. So yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. It looks like this is a uh, and this is an open telemetry uh, library, but still, yeah. like that's super freaking cool. Yeah. So the point is, right? Whatever attribute you have on any, on the log, whether this attribute was written by the app, whether it was enriched through the open telemetry collector, or whether it was enriched when it went through the Dynatrace open pipeline, because we also have a component in Dynatrace when data enters Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. uh, we can then process it, we can enrich it, we can convert it, we can extract data out of it, we can decide to store or not store it. So there's a lot of things we can do. But any log in this case and any attribute on the log can now be used for in for analysis. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. And I feel like we need to have a separate episode on open pipeline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, where, where you wow and amaze me with it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, do me another favor. Clear the uh, clear the filter. I completely okay. clear it on the top. Uh, okay. Yep. Go. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run it again. Okay. So one of the things that I would now like to do is, if you uh, now we see con convert conversion successful. So the currency service seems to be okay. interesting. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor if you are. Uh, if you click on currency service, you can also do this in the table, I believe, right? If you, if you pick, if you pick um, any oh, of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you should be able to also with the three dots, just say, you know, filter yeah. on it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, do we need to run the query again? Mm -hmm. Because then with run query, it actually then does the okay. thing. So now That's another cool thing is um, now we get all the logs in the last 30 minutes from the currency service. Mm -hmm. uh, Pick, do me a favor, pick any log here, yeah? One, okay. a random one, yeah? Click on it. Yeah. You see on the top where it says show surrounding logs and next to it yeah. open trace? Yes. Right? So mm -hmm. that means, <laughs> yeah, we, you know, go for it, whatever you want to click. All right. Yeah, because I'm curious actually what, what is considered a surrounding log. Mm -hmm. Is so that considered to be like the logs immediately before, immediately after? So there's two There's two options. Surrounding logs, in this case, defaulted to based on trace. You can see where it says surrounding logs on the left and next to it is a drop-down box. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if the log that you picked is associated with the trace, the yeah. surrounding logs show all of the logs on that trace. Oh. If there is no trace, it defaults to the other option that you have in the drop down box. So check out the other option based on topology. So it basically says, hey, uh, what else has been captured 
around that timestamp. It also looks into the timestamp, oh, okay. not only on that service, but around the whole topology. So if this service runs, like I know in your case it runs in Docker, but it, if it runs on a container, on a Kubernetes uh, node, on a Kubernetes cluster in some data center, it would show you all the logs that were captured from that topology dependency map. Yeah. In that time frame. Oh, very cool. Yeah. That is super awesome. Mm -hmm. I know. Very neat. Very neat. <laughs> <laughs> so impressive. <laughs> You're like, oh, of course it does that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, it's been doing this for a while, but it's always nice to see um, uh, the reaction, obviously. Yeah, this is a genuine reaction. I'm like, God yeah. damn, this is so cool. <laughs> And uh, I think we're still on the on the same log. The convert conversion successful. You can mm -hmm. still open the trace, right? You still have yeah. the open trace button. Ta-da! Okay, so we've got. Uh, oh well, we want a distributed trace. new one, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we discussed this last time, folks. Uh, we have a lot of apps in Dynatrace. Trace. Some are post fixed with classic, which means our classic screens. But we want to go with all the new stuff. Here we go. That's yes. It. Yes, new and improved. Yeah. And and then we can see all of, wow, there is a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> yeah. And now you actually see, we covered this in the last episode. If you go all the way down in this uh, scroll in this, uh, you can see now the colors really make a lot of yeah. sense because you, also from the color perspective, you can see how there's calls between two services constantly going on. So this is a nice yeah. pattern on the bottom. It's the, it's a classical data-driven problem where you're iterating through a loop and you're making call to a downstream <laughs> service. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool that you can you get to see that. And that you get to see the um the colors, the service the yeah, the colors mm -hmm. based on service. Mm -hmm. Um so you can you can see it's a nice visualization honestly. Like it's yeah. very pleasant on the eyes, I will yeah. say. Yeah. Um, because it makes it a lot nicer to make sense of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. It really gives you an appreciation too for like all of the stuff that happens in your code, right? Um, yeah. assuming, assuming that you're instrumenting it, like this, yeah. is, this stuff has been instrumented. Exactly. Um, so, um, the, this is the result of like properly instrumenting your code is you get, you get a proper view of what's going on. Exactly. So do me a favor, um, go back to your logs app and if I okay. should be able to, it should be able to uh, kind of keep the context as good as possible. Yeah, it still has the service, the currency service. Okay. Run that query again. Let's. Yeah. So we had this earlier, that's great. Um, one thing I want to show this, the logs app is a really great app to start to explore your logs. You can filter. Uh, you can navigate, um, we just ended up in the traces app, but what you can also do is um, on the top right with the three dots, do me a favor, right next to run query, there's like three dots. Uh, yep, yep. yep. Um, the yeah, actually that's that's a good one. Click on the edit DQL query. Here. This one, yeah, because behind the scenes, yeah. right, what it has just changed, it has changed from a graphical interface on how to define the query language or the query to the actual query itself. In Dynatrace query, the query language is called DQL, the Dynatrace query language. It's the same language, whether you're fetching logs, metrics, traces, events. Uh, you can also combine data and link uh, and, and kind of link it together. Um, so this is just one way to see what the real query is behind the scenes. Just one thing I want to show you. And the other thing I want to show you is if you click on these three buttons again, and this might be the segue yeah. then where we end up for the next episode. If you okay. click on open with, Ooh. Yeah. Very often what I see when people are exploring logs, they're actually often starting here, but then they move it over to notebooks. Mm. Right. Notebooks is a great way for data analysts. So if you are, if you are trying to uh, sift through data, if you're doing some forensics, so if you want to collect data in a notebook, um, then a notebook is a great thing to do this. So in our case, we could open up the notebook. Uh, I will probably choose the add Grail query to a new notebook, which is the top right. All right. Um, yeah. We don't want to do the one where we don't leave the app. No, I would. I would like to actually end up with with okay. this in today's episode. So click on it. All right. Um, All right. So we 
if we had notebooks, we could add them here, but we don't. Yeah, you create a new um, one. Yeah. New one. Yeah. And let's right. give it a, let's give it a good name. So yeah. that Andy, Andy does not. We we don't want to make Andy sad. He likes name notebooks, which yes, it's it's a good habit. So okay. let's just call it currency service notebook. Um, I can't think of, of a better name right now. Yeah. This is very cool. Yeah, and then what we see here is that right, we basically started. We start with a new notebook, and the notebook includes now and contains exactly that query with the fetch logs, the filter on the currency service. The nice thing about this is the notebook now contains not only the query, but yeah. also the result of that query. That means you, you could even take this notebook, you can export it, send it over to me. I could import it in my own Dynatrace environment, and I would also see your data. That's the beauty of a notebook, uh, but it probably is something for its own episode yes. on notebooks because they are super powerful. Yeah, I definitely agree. Definitely agree. Yeah, and and I mean, I have so many questions about notebooks, um, so I, I definitely want to have a dedicated discussion on yeah. this. But this is very awesome. Yeah. Um, every time, every time we chat, um, I always learn something new. So yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. So maybe to to conclude the log from my side, I know mm -hmm. in this case we started with the logs app. Yeah. In the first session we did on services. We started on the service, but also got a direct link to show me all the logs for the service. Mm -hmm. Also, the same is true for traces. If you are analyzing traces and you look at the trace, you also get to see the logs for that trace. So traces, logs, services, later on we see metrics and other things. They're all connected and we always try to make it easy for you to get the data that you need in the context you're operating in. Right? Yes, so. yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Well, great. Well, thank you for uh, this lovely overview on logs. It's been um, super useful and educational. And I hope folks got some good information out of this as well. Yeah. Until next time.